all very phallic, though. <laughs> um, holy smoke. Uh, well, you'll get a lot of guitar anyway, and I suppose this, the voice doesn't need an amplifier. Um, this is the Kentucky Moonshiner, um, um, which I picked up about 10 years ago. And uh, usually it's sung very plaintively and without an instrument. Um, and the melody is just very beautiful, so I decided to make a sort of a guitar study out of it. And then, um, oh, things, one thing led to another, and I've changed the melody because the guitar chords were so nice. And I ended up, uh, I ended up taking it somewhat away from Kentucky. Why don't I wait till people get in, and then we'll get started. Don't start yet. I was supposed to, once in a nightclub, you know, there's a certain ritual you have in a nightclub. You're supposed to just get announced and jump on stage, and then, and then you're supposed to play like mad, because that's professional. And, and so I, I had decided that if I had to do this, this is an $800 instrument. See, and the club is dark. I was going to take a ukulele, you see, <laughs> make a great big leap on stage, and then say, now that we've gotten rid of the ritual, you know, let's act like grown-ups. Anyway, um, enough of the light. Um, this is the Kentucky Moonshine. I've been a moonshiner for 17 long years. I spend all my money on whiskey and beers. I'll go to some holler and I'll set up my still and I'll sell you a gallon for a two dollar bill. I'll go to some grocery and I'll eat with my friends where the women can follow and see what I spend. God bless those pretty women. I wish they was mine. Their breath smells as sweet as the dew on the vine. Red meat when I'm hungry, moonshine when I'm dry, green bags when I'm hard up, and religion when I die. The whole world's a barter and life but a dram. When a bottle gets empty, but it ain't worth the damn. When a bottle gets empty Oh, this is a wonderful thing, then. The uh, lead guitarist for um, uh, Bella Fonte, um, his name is Millard Lampel, is a, uh, uh, Millard Thomas rather, is a very, very inventive guy. One of the few people who has used the classic guitar very intelligently in folk music with a great deal of taste. And he developed a thing, a, a sort of a cloudy little series of chords that uh, for the song Every Night When the Sun Goes Down, uh, Debbie uh, Green picked up the idea and composed the whole thing on it. And uh, this is this is what we do with it. You want to sit down? Yes. Oh.
Travis made this up when he was coal miner a long time ago. Merle Travis is a very, very fine guitarist, one of the really brilliant uh, guitarists in American folk music. And uh, before he became a professional cowbilly uh, in Sa Pasadena, he used to sing with a great big hat, and he uh, was a coal, mi a coal miner. And uh, he um, made up oh, eight, nine songs that for years didn't, didn't make a penny, M made a little album, and one of them was 16 ton. See, uh, this, this one was this nine pound hammer. Um, uh, I don't do it exactly the way Merle Trust does, because partly I can't, he's too good. Uh, partly because I, I hear it uh, slightly differently from the way he picked it. This nine pound hammer. It's a little too heavy For my side For my side well, I'm going up the mountain For to see my baby But I ain't coming back Yes, I ain't coming back Well, you rode on, buddy Don't you roll so slow Says, how can I roll when the wheels won't go? Don't you, buddy, put a load of gold? Well, how can I pull when the wheels won't roll? Said, it's a long way to Highland. It's a long way to Hazard. Just to get a little boom. Said just to get a little brew When I'm long gone Won't you make my tombstone Well, out of number nine comb Out of number nine comb Well, you roll on, buddy Don't you roll so slow How can I pull When the wheels won't go Roll on, buddy, pull a load of gold. 
Well, how can I pull when the wheels won't roll? Yeah. Got a big gun, says he tried to play bad. Gonna fake it in the morning, if he may be mad. I'm gonna work out June, July, and August. Says then I'll be a man. Says then I'll be a man. But you roll on, buddy. Don't you roll so slow. Said, how can I roll when the wheels won't go? Roll on, buddy, pull a load of foam. How can I pull when the wheels won't roll? Well, if I can work out June, July, and August, I will be your man. Said, I will be your man. If I had to listen to what my mama said, be home today, where my mama's been. Now you roll on, buddy, don't you roll so slow. Says, how can I roll when the wheels won't go? Roll on, buddy, pull a load of coal. Says, how can I pull when the wheels won't roll? the look of friendly possum that I have. <laughs> a, a, a critic once said, Khan, the uh, uh, Sacramento Bee, he said, Ralph Khan, who looks on stage like a friendly possum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's true. laughs> um, <laughs> Debbie learned this from a student of uh, a Blind Gary David, and then, oh, about a year ago, um, in Cambridge, uh, the Reverend Gary Davis, who was one of the great, great, great guitar players and singers of the blues and the spirituals, uh, sang it for us. And we've just had to do it since. You're going to leave me, baby.
have to tell you about this song. Um, it's called Columbus Stockade Blues. Um, I ran into it first at the Blind Lemon. That's a place I opened, a beer and wine place I opened in Berkeley eight years ago, seven years ago, trying to become a respectable citizen. <laughs> um, And um, uh, the idea was to have a place where people sang folk songs and, um, and then people would come who had money and would look at the characters singing the folk songs. <laughs> um, it was all going to work out very well, except the people singing folk songs got to be more and more precious. They, they'd bring manuscripts. Imagine, you know, huge manuscripts, sing old ballads, you know, and then they'd have factions. They'd start out sing each other. And one day, a real folk came in. Uh, <laughs> which is inconceivable in a place that has folk music, you see. Um, and nobody knew what he was trying to do or what he was singing. Uh, his name was Jack Langan, and he taught me a whole bunch of songs. Um, I, I was very sympathetic to the song in the first place because I spent two basic training periods at Fort Benning, Georgia, which is five miles away, no, ten miles away from Columbus, Georgia. A great little town. Columbus, Georgia, the now south of sunny Tennessee. No one there or comfort, no one to give a damn for me. Go and leave me if you want to. I never let you cross my mind if in your heart you love another. And go and leave me, darling, I don't mind. I am shackled down here in Columbus, stockade. The chains on my legs are making sores. I am laying in the mud in Columbus, stockade. And the jailer man ain't coming to my door. Go and leave me if you want to. I never let you cross my mind if in your heart you love another and go and leave me darling i don't mind last night while i lay sleeping i dreamed i held you in my arms when i awoke i was mistaken i was peering through the prison bars go and leave me if you want to i never let you cross my mind if in your heart you love another then go and leave me darling i don't mind tell me darling who will love you who will hold you in their arms who will take your future over but i'm behind these prison bars go and leave me I never let you cross my mind If in your heart you love another Then go and leave me, darling, I don't mind, you know You cross my mind If in your heart You love another Then go and leave me, darling I don't mind Um...
some thing here. <laughs> You're all over there. Oh, I have one.
instrumentation, the problem being often... Um, the, um, during the last 30 years, because of the, the general poverty of the... Um, of the guitarists in Spain, uh, very, it's very hard for them to make a living. There has come in the competition a drive for more and more speed. And so um, you, you begin to wonder whether the people have to catch a train, you see. They, they have to, if they can say something in five notes, they let you know that they can say the same thing in 200 notes. It's like the, uh, what was it, in the old days, Major Bowes program, there was always some character who could play the flight of the bumblebee in a half a minute, you know, and then <laughs> just kind of thing. Uh, and and with, with the speed, something has been genuinely lost, um, much of the feeling. I wasn't aware of this till my last trip to Spain when I was very, very fortunate to, uh, to study with two old-style guitarists who are not in a hurry and who say a great deal. One of them, the person who is to me the greatest flamenco guitarist alive, Perico de Romano. Um, and so this is not to show you that I have fast hands, you see. Uh, it's to give you an idea of how a people, the people of the south of Spain, of Andalusia, express their lives on the guitar. The guitar seems to almost have been made for them to talk through. This is called Fugliaris.
thing I made up. Um, um, it's a poem by Federico Garcia Lorca, and it's one of these existentialist things that he, he used to write. Um, he, was, he, was a poem, he was a poet of Granada, Gran, and he was killed in Granada. Granada probably is the only city in the history of the world that ever killed its own poet. Um, um, he wrote a, a, a thing called In the Branches of the laurel, I saw two dark doves. One was the sun and one was the moon. Neighbors, I said to them, where is my grave? In my heart, said the sun, in my tail, said the moon. That's all the poem is. Your chance to be highbrow. I didn't quite understand it. I made up um, the, the melody and the rhythm of the fandangos is all set, you see, and I thought I liked uh, the way the poem fell to the rhythm and the melody of the fandangos, so that's, that's what I've done with it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
I changed this from the version that um uh, that was sung in the Arkansas Plateau, a beautiful melody. That was went like this. So and uh, it was um oh Woody Guthrie recorded, a lot of people recorded it. And in 1955, uh, I, I did a concert with a performer who had a beautiful, deep voice. And she was going to sing the melody, and I was going to sing <laughs> And in order to make the thing more interesting and to get some kind of a harmony, I had to change the chords. So I changed the chords, and that led to another melody. So the song has changed somewhat, and now I have a version. I'm credited with the version. Um, and people put on paper, you know, books. This is the version collected from. Uh, this is this community, the folk music collecting community, is about, you know, as, as stuffy as any you're going to run into. So I suppose I, I'll, I'll always be a footnote in somebody's. <laughs> anyway, it's it's a fun it's a fun thing on the guitar, and and I, I do like the melody that I made up. Be your man. Who's gonna? 
gonna be a man Who's gonna be Who's gonna kiss your red ruby lips? Who's gonna be your man? Papa will shoot my pretty little foot. Mama will glove my hand. Sister will kiss my red ruby lips. I don't need no man. I don't need no Sister will kiss my red ruby lips I don't need no man Longest train I ever did ride Was a thousand coaches long And the only woman I ever did love Is on that train and gone On that train and gone And the only woman I ever did love is on the train and gone. Look up and down that lonesome road, hang your head and cry. The best of friends are bound to part. Why not you and I? Why not you? Best of friends are bound to part, so why not you and I? This one I made up in 1956. I was living in Marin County then. And uh, um, the fellow called me up. He was really a very nice guy. It's just that the conversation was very funny. He said, uh, I'm in charge of the Music for Minors program. Uh, it's a children's music festival. And in the past, we've only done things that were very dull. We've said, this is a tuba, and then the tuba has gone poop poop. And this is an, a fiddle, you know. But now we're going to be creative. Uh, and, and then he threw in a lot of, you know, you mean to spot this. He threw in context, framework, dynamics, a social worker. <laughs> um, um, so I, I, know this, I, I know this ritual. Uh, and so we exchanged, we exchanged uh, words for a while. You see, we, I threw enough dynamics, frameworks, context, the needs of the children, and so on. And we had met. Um, <laughs> He says, what do you have, what kind of songs do you have that reflect the living needs of the children, li the living experiences of the children? What do I have? Uh, I have cowboy songs. <laughs> <laughs> sea shanties, cowboy songs, outlaws, Jesse James, Pretty Boy Florida. He says, oh no, 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 no. no. So I had to make up a song. And I, um, yeah. so Woody, Woody Guthrie had written a talking song called How To Do. And um, I took that, and then I, I took some lines from uh, a song by Malvina Reynolds, who is a wonderful children's uh, poet, and I added a verse of my own, and I put the whole business to the melody of the good ship Titanic. And what came out, <laughs> what came out was how to do. <laughs> what came out was how to do, and I, all, all you do is sort of uh, put toys and relatives together in order of importance. Um, <laughs> It's, this is about, this is actually for, for little people who, um, who aren't civilized and, and yet, you see. And so they want to say hello to the whole world. Um, uh, so if you feel like shouting the how to do back at the song, you go ahead, because that's, that's how we worked it in the Music for Minors Festival.
You stick out your heart and hand to every woman, kid and man. Well, you shake it up and down with a how do you do? On my sidewalk, on the street, everybody that we meet. Well, you shake it up and down with a how do you do? How do you do? How do you do? How's your daddy? How's your puppy? How are you? I feel glad when you feel good. You cheer up my neighborhood. Shake a hand with everybody. How do you do? When I walk into my door, you come around from across the floor, and we shake it up and down with a how do you do? When you jump up out of bed, out of the window goes your head, and you bob it up and down. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? How's your mother? How's your toys? And how are you? I feel glad when you feel good. You cheer up my neighborhood. Shake a hand with everybody. How do you do? When you're buzzing like a bee, when you're standing like a tree, turn your branches to the wind with a how do you do? When you're skating on the ice, when you're thinking something nice, raise your eyebrows up and down. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? How's your grandma? How's your baby? How are you? I feel glad when you feel good. You cheer up my neighborhood. Shake a hand with everybody. How'd you do? Through the valley, through the forest, climbing up the mountain high. When you see the birds flying, how'd you do? When you see a train coming and it makes a rumbling noise, wave your arm in a great big way. Shout, how'd you do? Well, how'd you do? How do you do? How's your cousin? How's your uncle? How are you? I feel glad when you feel good. You cheer up my neighborhood. Shake a hand with everybody. How do you do? Here we go now. Grandma, how's your grandpa? How are you? I feel glad when you feel good. We'll cheer up our neighborhood. We'll shake hands with the whole wide world. With a how do you do? This is against the Mayans. Be stopped. You see, this is the 20th century. It isn't on, on, on basis of humanist needs. It's that their culture, their their symbology was valuable. See, and you don't want to... Okay. Um, anyway, uh, um, this man, Guti Cardenas, um, went to uh, this area and made up some really beautiful songs that he combined uh, into an opera. It was going to be the first opera written by a Mexican, produced by a Mexican company. And um, it was a very big thing. And the poor man was shot in a barroom brawl. Um, it was a, a, one of these lost bullets you read about. And anybody who's been in Mexico City, always a half a dozen casualties. Lost bullet. You know, and nobody worries, it's just one of these things. It's a lost bullet. Uh, Guti Cardenas died, and um, plans for the opera were given up. Um, these songs became famous, and this is incredible. There is a doctor, um, uh, Alfonso Ortiz, and Dr. Ortiz became a popular singer making these songs famous in order to make money for his clinic. See, now these songs have become popular and there were records being made, and now, as can only happen in Mexico, Guti Cardenas' wife got into the act. I can't stand the sound of these songs. My husband's memory is too painful. You know, and, and the, the people in the, in the record companies actually went along with the schmaltz. And the records, the records were no longer printed. It, um, the, the records of Alfonso Ortiz or the, quote, the three diamonds doing this song are actually very valuable today. They're black market records. Anyway, all this, just, just a lovely little song about a man who wanders through the wilderness and hears, and, and hears in the clouds and in the singing of, of various wild birds, he senses his own loneliness. It's called The Wanderer of the Mind Country, Caminante de my child. <laughs> Caminante, 
caminante que va so much in this kind of a concert that doesn't have white tie and tails and the right kind of ritual. There's so much that the audience does. It's uh, a place where you sing it easy.
a week and during that week I've been warned ten times every day don't go near the gypsy section they'll steal you blind uh, you know it's, it's uh, what can they steal from me uh, so <laughs> I had had some uh, I've been told of, about a few people that I, I should look up and um, I, I went there with with my instrument and I played a while and they're very polite you know they listen oh very good very good and then usually they They've been at it all their lives, you see, and they play, and just incredible experiences you go through. And then, of course, there's always the, the final humiliation when somebody gasses you out of your mind, you know, and, he's, and, and, and then, and then the, the person sitting next to you says, oh, yeah, he's all right, but you should hear his father, <laughs> you know. Uh, so this was at the Villa Rosa in, in, um, uh, in, in Barcelona, and um, I had heard, of course, I, I, I had listened to and played a lot of the rhythms. I'd been in the music a long time. But all of a sudden, the eight, nine people who were there, um, the place was closed, it was very late at night, uh, began to set up a rhythm with the palms that I had never heard before. And the whole place just seemed to explode. Marvelous palms and that, that funny driving beat that uh, one of the uh, guitarists put on. He didn't, he didn't do much. His right hand was, was very percussive. It was almost Cuban, almost uh, Calypso. And I asked the person next to me, what's that? He says, rumba. <laughs> rumba? Yeah, rumba. I said, is it flamenco? Oh, yes, yes, it's flamenco. But from Catalonia. Well, that's impossible, because Catalonia in the north of Spain is the squarest country in the world. <laughs> they don't even know how to march. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, they, um, just, just fantastic. So, uh, it turned, dur during, the, during the succeeding year, of course, I ran into rumba over and over again. It's a rhythm that's very important today. The, the old timers think it's the end of flamenco, that, that it's going to kill flamenco because of this huge Caribbean influence. And between all the young people and all the singers who just love it and the, uh, and the gypsies, rumba has become a very important thing. Uh, I like it very much. I don't see where any rhythm ever poses a danger to a musical dynamic. This is called Yo Soy Un Hombre de Campo. 
and it is the rumba that it is the rumba that made the form uh, uh, popular in the flamenco world. <laughs> Campo, llorona, ni entiendo ni sé de letra, pero soy a la opinión, pero soy de la opinión, que ella que me busca me encuentra. Solero, si sabe que yo te quiero, si por tu querer yo me muero, no me martirizarás. Y ya ya yo me quiero ir. A ya yo me quiero marchar, porque me cantan y bailan. Lo gitanillo allá, que yo te canto, que yo te baile, seguiría, mira, habrá. Sevillana, soleare, bulería, mira, habrá. A mí me ha dicho el cura, a mí me ha dicho el cura, de la carita de la Virgen, sea una copia tuya. Bárgame mi compañero, quiero una copia tuya. Empújame, 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 empújame la columpia allá. Empújame, 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 empújame la columpia allá. I should share uh, some more that evening with you, at least with the male uh, m uh, members of the audience. There was a, a real fine-looking one, a dark gypsy, um, um, <laughs> sitting right in front of me. You see, I was sort of sitting against the wall, and she was right there. And her husband was the one who started, uh, you know, who started... <laughs> you know, and uh, this, this girl hadn't said, had a word all, all, all evening, you know, and uh, these beautiful long hands, you know, and this... Oh, so, uh, and they're all faithful, you know, this is terrible. Um, and, um, yeah, gypsy, gypsy, terrible, terrible. The biggest disappointment about the gypsy community. Um, but all of a sudden she let loose and she sounded like a fishwife. Oh, <laughs> no! And uh, my, my friend who had introduced me to the bar, um, 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 Kali, was a singer and a dancer. And of course, every one of these, these young men who, who are in the music are kings. You know, they, they, they close as, as, oh, eighth generation goodwill, you know, but, but really you just have the feeling that this is all a mistake, that they're really aristocracy. <laughs> so they're, so Kali, Kali is standing against the bar and this girl is, sit is sitting there and these great palms and people singing this hombre de campo and uh, people are shouting at her. So finally she got up and she started to dance. <laughs> you know, and I kept feeling guilty, you know, I kept, about what I was thinking. I kept looking at the husband. He, he had his eyes closed. He was <laughs> uh, and, and Kali, Kali with this great grin on his face, uh, standing against the bar, you know, and, and they kept shouting at him to start dancing. And all of a sudden, nothing had changed. He was still, you know, he was still a duke. You know, and his shoulders were back, and he was standing, he was waiting for the pole, you know, and uh, he still had this grin. All of a sudden, his left leg has no longer any bones in it, you know, and then his right leg was the most marvelous thing. And he did, they, they did this, this, how do you describe it? A mean boogie. You know? <laughs> anyway, I love...
This was uh, recorded by many uh, gospel groups. There is a land beyond the river that we call the sweet forever. Can't you, or can't you hear them bells are ringing? Can't you hear the angels singing? I hope I remember. There is a land beyond the river that we call the sweet forever. Says you only reach me so by faith decree. One by one, we'll reach the portal there to dwell with the immortal. When they ring them golden bells for you and me. Well now, can you hear bells ringing? Can you hear the angels singing? It's a glory, hallelujah, to believe. In that land of sweet forever till them beyond the shining river They will ring them golden bells for you and me Well, when our days have known their number And in death we sweetly slumber Says the kingdom and the spirit will be free Then no more with anxious yearning will we that final learning when they ring them golden bells for you and me and now can you hear bells are ringing can you hear the angels singing says the glory hallelujah jubilee in that land of sweet forever children beyond the shining river they will ring them golden And you hear the bells ring, and you hear the angels singing. It's a glory, hallelujah, to believe. In that land of sweet forever, children beyond the sight. 